You know, one thing I always thought was cool was when Boruto and Naruto had similarities between them, with Boruto's design being a callback to the older series. It's a part of the reason why I love Dragon Ball GT. I know some dislike that show for what seems like an endless list of reasons, but one reason I loved that series was because it called back to the other series, such as the original Dragon Ball and Dragon Ball Z. Honestly, the Boruto series, particularly the anime, has received a sort of similar reception, but all the same, I still enjoy it, particularly because it's fun, has callbacks, etc, etc. One of my favorite callbacks is the whole demon inside of me trope that has seemingly become a lot more common in anime today. Within Naruto, Boruto was the Ninetales demon fox, the same that his mother possessed. And as for Boruto, his own little curse mark is on the palm of his hand, and what's sealed within him is not a demon fox, but an Otsutsuki. The latter is probably a worse situation, as Naruto never really had to worry about being taken over by Kurama unless he was overusing his power. But I digress. That leads me to the question I want to tackle today. What if Naruto got the Karma Seal instead of the Ninetales? Welcome to the Amagi. Before we begin, we publish a new video every day, so be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. The Amagi's reach stretches beyond just this channel, so if you're a fan of us, please consider subscribing to our other channels and following us on all of our social media. Help us reach our goal of passing 100,000 followers on all of our accounts by the end of the year. The story starts where it always does, Naruto's birth. As you would remember, Kushina going into labor weakened the seal on Kurama, meaning now was the perfect time to strike. The child was born, screaming into the world behind the roaring of a tailed beast. As soon as the nurses took him up, Minato was instructed to close the seal. As he was doing so, however, our favorite identity thief in a tiger mask shows up and nabs the baby, threatening its life unless Minato delivers the nine tails to him. Now, normally, this is the point where everything gets real in Konoha, but suppose that a hand grabs Toby from behind. One might be able to say that it would phase right through him, but that's not how this works. Toby rarely makes his whole body do this. The only time he uses Kamui on his whole body is when his body teleports. Honestly, Kamui isn't even supposed to work like that, but Obito was just crafty enough to use it to make himself intangible, or functionally so. That being said, he only makes certain parts of his body intangible at a time, and he generally can only do so when he realizes what's about to happen, and right now, he doesn't. So more than likely, the hand doesn't go through and on the off chance that it does, it grabs the baby, so either way, it's a win-win here. But if you can already guess who this might be, there's a chance that it might not even work anyway, as Momoshiki has the ability to absorb jutsu. Now, don't quote me on this, but he should be able to absorb space-time jutsu if he can touch the practitioner, which he logically should be able to do. If I'm wrong, just tell me in the comments. Either way, Momoshiki touches Toby, and Toby bolts. Having lost control of the situation with the sudden appearance of a chakra so massive that it makes all people within Konoha save Kushina seem like small taters. Not to mention, he can feel pointed fingernails, and if he ever turns back to look, well, the visage of Momoshiki is unearthly. Unless you have prior experience with something like this, you might think that Satan himself crawled up to take that baby from you. And so Toby, without a word, relinquishes the baby to the new figure holding what appeared to be a turtle. For a brief moment, Minato, Toby, and Momoshiki, the latter of which is now holding baby Naruto, look around at each other before Toby hits the old Dusty with his Kamui. Momoshiki looks at the baby in his hands with a slightly nefarious smile. I was right on the mark. Perfect. Minato now has his attention purely on Momoshiki. Kushina, by this time, was trying to turn her head in ungodly ways just to see what was going on. Minato looked at the Otsutsuki. You're bleeding. Momoshiki looked down at what had once been a pure white tunic, now stained with his own blood and viscera. Indeed, he responded. Minato held his hands out. Give me the baby and I'll call help for you. Momoshiki smiled, his pointed canines making him seem like some carnivorous beast. Is that so? And why would you do that? Minato kept his voice calm and serious. Because you're a hero, you saved my baby from death. Momoshiki looked down at the baby that was still crying in his arms. He shushed the baby with a finger. I suppose I did. Either way, it's too late for me. Or maybe it isn't. Minato was gripping a kunai behind his back tightly. Momoshiki looked up, his golden Byakugan glowing in the dark, his golden Rinnegan in the center of his forehead just below his two massive horns. But alas, the being stepped forward and offered to Minato the child in his arms. Minato took the baby and took a step back. Momoshiki stood there, his long white hair flowing in the wind. Minato handed the baby to Kashina. The child bore on its skin a little blood, likely from the mysterious figure before them. Minato looked back at the dead nurses, among which was Biwako. He looked back at this 
person. Let us help you. The man smiled. You've already done enough. Thank you. And without another word, the man began self-immolation. He burned until there was nothing left. This left both Kushina and Minato absolutely confused, and who wouldn't be? They recognized that someone had been targeting them, but whoever rescued them was a pure mystery. After this, Minato came to Kushina's side. Is Naruto okay? Kushina held her crying child close. I think so. He doesn't seem like he's hurt. Minato let out a sigh of relief. He then called for Anbu reinforcements and followed his gut, teleporting Kushina to another location where she and the baby would be safe. It was there that he finished closing the seal. They checked out the child to ensure it hadn't been hurt and was healthy. Eventually, a nurse walked in. Mr. and Mrs. Namikaze? Minato looked over. What is it? Is everything alright with Naruto? The nurse looked down. We're still checking him out, but we found an anomaly. Kushina felt her heart jump. Anomaly? What kind? Is he okay? The nurse nodded. As far as we can tell, he is. But we discovered a strange mark between both of the child's clavicles. It's in the shape of a perfect diamond. We at first believed it to be a birthmark, but upon closer inspection, it almost seems like a curse mark. Minato and Kushina looked to each other and then back to the nurse. A curse mark? The nurse nodded. Currently, it doesn't seem to be active, but it is deeply troubling. Can you think of anyone who may or may not have been able to plant one directly on your baby? Minato looked back at Kushina. It had to be that weirdo. But why would he put a curse mark on our baby? Minato shook his head as to say that he didn't know. The doctors would hold Naruto for observation for a few weeks, but eventually they decided to release him. Minato and Kushina would take him home. They'd keep an eye on the curse mark for a time, but eventually it became natural to them. They had never seen a curse mark like this before and had no idea what it might do, but all things considered, it went this long without activating, and so perhaps it wasn't complete or wasn't dangerous. They eventually forgot about it and continued to raise Naruto up as he normally would have been raised. He would enter the academy where he was considered a very popular boy. This was partly because he was son of the Hokage. However, he did have a charm all his own. He was dopey, yes, but he had his mother's fire, and his determination made him all the cooler to be around. Sasuke was here too, and he was the other cool kid. And considering that due to Minato's survival and no attack on the Hidden Leaf by the Ninetales, a lot of stuff does change in the series, the Uchiha's survival being one of these things. Naruto is considered bright by normal standards due to having proper tutors as the son of the Hokage. This causes Naruto to excel in his studies and graduate right on time. And of course, Minato will ask Kakashi to train Naruto's team. You think he would have anyone but his own apprentice teaching his son? Naruto is far more prideful than before due to having never really needed to struggle being constantly praised for his skill. This is evident to Kakashi in their first real training session. In their attempt to get the bells, however, this exposes their weaknesses. That being how the son of the Hokage and the son of the Uchiha clan leader have an intense rivalry, which puts an immediate kibosh on any concept of teamwork. They're trying so desperately to outdo one another that they forget that they can't beat Kakashi alone. So yeah, they totally fail the test. But it's not like Kakashi can send them away. He was requisitioned by the Hokage himself to train these children, so the best this did was tell Kakashi where he had to focus his training. And so Kakashi began teaching them the values of being on a team, and the general scenario continues to play out the same. Minato, in an effort to help Team 7 grow, sends them on a mission to the Land of Waves along with Tazuna. Now, Naruto and Sasuke are both heavily skilled by this time, so the Demon Brothers are like nothing to them. Well, that's an exaggeration. They are difficult, but neither Naruto nor Sasuke freeze, and both respond in a competent way which leads to the defeat of the Demon Brothers. Kakashi realizes that Tezuna lied to them about the difficulty of this mission and that it should be Chunin level. But considering what Sasuke and Naruto just displayed, it doesn't really seem like they'll mind continuing. And so they do. When Naruto and Sasuke face Zabuza, they find themselves a bit more overwhelmed. It's then that Sasuke and Naruto put their noggins together and come up with an actual plan. Teamwork makes the dream work, am I right? Zabuza is forced to retreat from this as he normally is, and Kakashi congratulates them on their teamwork. Now, nothing too major changes at this point, but when they get to the bridge's construction, there is a big change. Particularly at the point when Sasuke gets pierced by needles and goes down. Naruto believes that Sasuke is dead, and that's when everything changes. His emotional state fraying, what lives within, decides to pop out and say hi. But instead of the nine tails coming out, Naruto merely stands. From the diamond on his chest comes out many lines that cross his entire body. A single horn forms on the side of his head as his eye turns into a Byakugan. He looks up at Haku and then around himself. He begins to wonder how long he'd been asleep. Haku now looks at him with caution. What is this form? 
Naruto, or whoever you might call him now, looks down before looking back up at Haku, smiling and raising a hand that releases an energy blast so large that it eradicates every mirror and Haku along with them. Kakashi and Zabuza look back at the bright light and only see Naruto rise out of it into the air. He hovers there and looks about. He looks at himself. I'm no expert on human growth cycles, but I would suppose I'm about 105,000 standard hours old, give or take. He sees Kakashi and Zabuza. Which of you can tell me where I am? Kakashi looks up at him in awe. Zabuza speaks. The hell is this? Since when can Genin fly? Narushiki looks down at Zabuza with contempt. Didn't your mother ever tell you that it's rude to answer a question with a question? He releases about five chakra rods that pin Zabuza down. He then looks to Kakashi who is in complete shock. Now, tell me, where am I? Kakashi speaks. Th the land of waves, in the land of fire. Narushiki scoffs. You humans have such strange naming conventions. He raises his hand to release another blast of energy. Before he could, however, Kakashi jumped off the bridge. The bridge was cracked and severed in two by this blast. It almost threatened to fall. It was then that he hears a voice call out to him. Naruto! He looks back. Sakura-chan. He shakes his head. Damn it, he's still awake. He holds his hand up to blast Sakura, but before he can, Naruto's other eye opens. His eyes cross to look at each other, his left eye growing angrier as his right eye began to close. And in the moment it did, Naruto's form ended and he fell to the ground. Sakura caught him. She held him, confused at what had happened. Naruto would slowly wake up. Sakura, what happened? Team 7 would eventually be escorted back to the village where Naruto would be sedated and Sasuke would be left to recover from his injuries. Kakashi would stand there by the window, looking in, on crutches due to the height with which he fell into the water being enough to cause a fracture in his leg. Minato would eventually show up, having come straight from work. What happened? Kakashi looked over. I have no idea. Minato looked in. Is Naruto hurt? Kakashi shook his head. No, but he's still sedated. Minato was shocked. Why? Kakashi then began to explain what had happened to him. Your son single-handedly killed a Chunin-level shinobi and a Jonin-level shinobi with ease. He flew, possessed strange markings across his body, grew a horn, and even possessed a Byakugan. Minato's eyes widened as he thought back. If anyone had said those traits without talking about Naruto, Minato would have instantly assumed that they were talking about that man who had saved him from death. Kakashi immediately thereafter told him, it seemed that there was someone else in his mind. He didn't know his location or age and continued to call us humans. Those things all but confirmed a theory that he had. The curse mark on Naruto's chest was some way of reincarnating. It was like the mind-body switch technique that the Yamanaka clan were capable of using, but only it was possible to use after death. Minato sighed and rubbed his face. The day he long feared finally reared its ugly head. Naruto's seal had activated. He looked over. If they wake him up, which person will wake first? Kakashi shrugged. There are some specialists in there currently. Here is an even called in Tsunade on special request. Tsunade? Minato asked with genuine surprise. Kakashi nodded. Yes, she came as a favor to the Hokage. She's in there now. Minato stepped to the door. Do you think it's okay if I go in? Kakashi once more shrugged. You're asking the wrong man. Minato opened the door carefully and stepped to the bed where they had Naruto laying. Naruto was still unconscious. Minato approached Tsunade. Excuse me, I don't mean to interrupt. Tsunade looked back for a moment before returning her attention to Naruto's chart. Lord Forth. Minato walked to Naruto's side and gently took his hand. He looked to Tsunade. Can you tell me what's happening? Tsunade, without even looking up, spoke. Your son possesses a strange mark on his chest. It's not too unlike my strength of a hundred seal, but it seems far more dangerous. We've tried using the evil sealing method on it, but it did not take. It appears that someone has implanted their chakra into your son. But not just that, their genetics too. Your son's genetics have changed since his last blood test. Over 80% of his current DNA has suddenly become something we're not finding in nature. What does that mean? Tsunade finally looked up at him. As best as I can tell, your son is a clone. Minato was startled. A clone? Impossible. I was there when he was born. Tsunade shook her head. No, I mean, he's becoming a clone. Essentially, this seal on his chest appears to be designed to implant someone's mind and soul into their host. But further, it also seems to be implanting DNA. Your son is being turned into a clone. Minato was confused. Why? Tsunade then continued. It appears to be like a backup. Think of it like this. You have a laptop and that laptop's keyboard is broken. The screen's cracked and it doesn't turn on anymore. So what do you do? You take out the hard drive and put it into another computer. It's just like that. Minato wasn't the most technical man in the world, but he at least understood what she was getting at. So someone died and is using that mark on his chest to reincarnate? 
Tsunade nodded. Minato then asked the obvious question. Is there a way to stop it? Tsunade shook her head. We've exhausted all the treatments we have. It won't slow down. It's editing his genes at an increased rate. We can't keep up with it. Every time we try to thwart it, it simply bypasses us. We've tried the five element seal, the evil sealing method, and we're even breaking into Uzumaki clan techniques to try and put a stop to this. But the best we've been able to do is mildly slow it down. Minato thinks for a moment. Can we wake him up? Tsunade nods. As it stands, we might have been able to suppress the second consciousness, at least for now. She adjusts the anesthesia. If you wish, you can also take him home, but don't go too far with him. I may need to tweak treatment a little. Slowly, Naruto begins to wake up. Dad? Minato smiles and pushes the boy's hair out of his eyes. Hi, Naruto. Naruto looks around, still groggy. Where am I? You're in Konoha General. Naruto thinks back. I must have gotten hurt pretty bad. How many toes did I lose? Minato laughs as Naruto smiles up at him. Really though, how hurt am I? You aren't, actually, Tsunade tells him. Naruto wonders then why he's in the hospital. Tsunade looks to Minato and simply stands off to the side by the window. Naruto sees this. Uh-oh, that can't be good. He looks up at Minato. Shoot straight with me, Dad. How sick am I? Minato shook his head. He looked down and pointed to the mark on Naruto's chest. Naruto looked down. Holy crap, it's like someone painted every single sight and reticule from every Call of Duty game on my chest at once. What happened? Minato then began to explain what had happened in the Land of Waves. And so, Lady Tsunade has been experimenting with different seals to keep this curse mark at bay. Naruto sits there for a moment and thinks about it. Minato helps sit him up and grabs Naruto's clothes so he can change. We're gonna take you home now. They seem to have been able to hold off the other consciousness with these seals, so you should be safe to let loose in the village. Naruto nodded and changed into his clothes. Together, he and Minato walked out of the hospital. Naruto didn't talk much. Minato had to get the Chunin exams ready, so he had to work. Naruto was excused from duty for the foreseeable future. He spent a lot of time at home with his mother. His mood by that point was pretty dark. He wouldn't eat or sleep. He would smile, but it was obvious that every smile was himself forcing it for his parents' sake. It was heartbreaking, and so she and Naruto would often go out places to do things. They would go to the market, and every so often they would visit Minato to have lunch. There, they would let Naruto decide if he wanted to hang out with mom or dad. He tended to mix it up, depending on how much work Minato had to do. Given that most of his work consisted of preparing for the Chunin exams, he wasn't always busy and had time to hang around with his father. As time grew closer, Minato would ask Naruto if he would like to enjoy the Chunin exams with him. Given that none of Team 7 had signed up for the exams, neither Kuranai nor Asuma felt that they were required to do so either. And since the Hidden Sound Village was never formed due to Minato not being afraid to pull the trigger on Orochimaru, this meant that there were far fewer contestants this time. This meant that when the exhibition rounds came around, they would not be required to take a month off as they had just enough to not go over the limit, meaning that they could wrap it all up in just a few days at most. Naruto seemed to enjoy himself pretty well then. He and Minato would watch it together, and even Kushina would take some time away to watch with them. On one particular day, after watching the exhibitions, Naruto and Minato went to the park for lunch. They sat there and bonded over their meal. Who do you favor winning the whole thing? Minato asked. Naruto thought about it. I think Neji will win. His defenses seem nigh impregnable. Minato laughed. No defense is impregnable, but I must admit it'll be hard to beat him. I'd throw my money on him too. Either him or that Lee kid. When Mike Guy trains up an apprentice, he trains him up good. Minato noticed that Naruto had hardly touched anything on his plate. He let off a calm smile and slid his hand over Naruto's. Listen, Naruto, we will figure this out. Naruto looked down. Last appointment, my DNA was 85% something else. Yeah, Minato asked. Naruto looked up. Does that mean I'm not your son anymore? Minato couldn't understand. What? Naruto explained. When I was born, I was born with half of your genes and half of mom's. But now, 85% of my genes are something not you. Does that mean I'm not your son anymore? Minato shook his head. No, it'll never mean that. Even if you were 100% something else, you would always be my son. I was there when your mother gave birth to you. Genes don't dictate who family is. Love does that. Love is the DNA of the soul, and bonds are the chains that hold us together. You'll always be my son, and I swear that that won't change. Naruto nodded. Dad? What is it, Naruto? Dad, will you promise that if I turn into the other guy, that... Naruto took a deep breath. That you'll kill me. Minato felt his heart almost stop. Kill you? Why would I do that? That won't have to happen. We'll figure it out, I promise. Naruto looked up at him as tears ran down his cheeks. Dad, I don't want to hurt you, or mom, or the village. Please, promise me, if I ever become a danger to everyone, that you'll choose the whole over me. Promise me. 
Swear it on your role as Hokage. Minato saw how serious Naruto was. He saw the conviction in his son's glassy eyes. I promise. Naruto got out of his chair and hugged his father. The two sat in the Kage's viewing box together. On the right was Rasa, the Kazakage of the Hidden Sand Village. Rasa would continue to glance to the side, seeing Naruto sitting on a stool with Minato. Minato would turn to Rasa. Your son, Gara, is coming up. I heard he and his siblings broke the record for the quickest time through the second phase, the Forest of Death. You must be so proud. Rasa nodded. Sure. Naruto watched closely from the box, leaning against the railing. He's going up against Neji. Both of those guys have an absolute defense. I can't wait to see this. Minato smiled, knowing that this was the most excited he had seen Naruto since the seal in his chest became active. The battle began and Neji rushed in. Gara stood there, his gourd producing for him the sand that would serve as both offense and defense. The sand could not really harm Neji due to the gentle fist style and Neji's general taijutsu skills. However, Neji could not strike Gara due to the latter possessing a sand barrier that flat out ate up Neji's attacks. This became a battle of attrition, and considering that Gara possessed a tailed beast, his chakra reserves were astronomically higher than Neji's. Even if Neji had landed a shot on one or more of Gara's tenketsu, he would have broken free fairly easily due to this extra well of chakra popping the pressure point back open. In the end, it was Gara who was victorious, and Neji was left unable to avenge Rock Lee. But at this time, there was an explosion in the Kage's box. Naruto was knocked over the side, holding onto the railing by one hand as Gara released his tailed beast. Minato cried out Naruto's name and tried to save him, but behind him, Rasa struck out, trying to kill Minato. The Anbu were trying to evacuate the stadium. One of the agents saw him and looked up. Hold tight, honorable son. We'll send someone up to... Ah! Ah! The agent was picked up by the one tail and bitten in half, swallowed by the beast. It let out a roar. Naruto screamed in terror as it did this. Suddenly, the beast noticed Naruto there. It reached out and picked him from the railing. Naruto was in its grip and headed closer to its mouth to suffer the same fate as the Anbu agent. He screamed as it opened its mouth. There was a snap within him as the hand of the beast shattered to sandy dust. Naruto hovered there momentarily. He looked up, his Byakugan activated. For a moment, Narushiki looked at the beast with wonder and amazement. Oh, you're but a fraction of the Ten Tails. That's interesting. To be honest, Momoshiki was impressed. Honestly, it's amazing that your sage of six paths thought up such a plot. Seal the functionality of his ten tails behind nine beasts. Truly a move worthy of an Otsutsuki. Shukaku raised his fist to smash Naruto, but the hand was blown off by Momoshiki again. But alas, I am growing tired of this. He rushed forward and plucked Gara right from his tailed beast and head him up. With a simple flick of his wrist, Gara's neck was cleanly snapped. Narushiki dropped the body as he crossed his arms and hovered a little higher. He looked down. My, has Konoha changed throughout the years. At about that time, Minato was finishing off Rasa. He looked back and saw Naruto in the air. Naruto, no! He would rush forward, and utilizing his flying Raijin Jutsu, he teleported to the mark he had placed on the inside of Naruto's jacket, and began pulling him down to the ground. Momoshiki cursed the Kage for dragging them down, and managed to just break their fall with his flight. Now, in the middle of the arena, Minato managed to stand. Momoshiki scoffed. You know, you're nowhere near as strong as your son is. Or was. Or I guess never will be. Timelines and all that. Minato stood there, resolute. He knew exactly what he needed to do. He rushed at Momoshiki, deploying plenty of shadow clones. Momoshiki raised his hands to form two finger pistols where he proceeded to fire off round after round of chakra blasts like a machine gun. Some Minatos were hit, others dodged, but all managed to draw close enough to threaten Narushiki. Unbeknownst to Momoshiki, the real Minato was coming up underneath him. Minato put his hand on the seal and began to add a new formula to reinstitute the seal. Momoshiki went to claw Minato's face but found himself passing out before he could. His knees hit the ground and Minato caught Naruto before he could fall back. He took Naruto to the hospital. The staff there were already working very hard. Thanks to the efforts of the Anbu, few people were injured or killed, but that wasn't to say that there were no casualties. And those who were here were getting expert treatment. Shizune would be the one to draw the blood, while Tsunade had her back turned. Once that test was over, Tsunade would check the seal. And you said that this consciousness broke through this. Minato nodded. Tsunade sighed. As I told you, we're only slowing it down. We can't stop it. Minato's shoulders drooped in sorrow. Kushina did eventually show up in the hospital and sat by Naruto, opposite to Minato. Did it happen again? She asked. Minato solemnly bobbed his head up and down. It was everything I could do to control it. He single-handedly overpowered a tailed beast. I was lucky he wasn't being serious. If he had truly tried to kill me with everything he had, I'd be dead right now. I highly doubt I'll get away with this a second time. 
He waited by his bedside until Tsunade walked in. Results of the blood test came back. It's progressed. He's at 95%. One more outburst like this and it's over. Kushina looked back at her. How much time do we have left before he reaches 100? Tsunade took a deep breath, measuring based on previous data, no more than a few days, a week tops. Tears began to spring from her eyes. No, no, not my baby, not my baby. Tsunade looked down. You can take him home whenever you want. Spend as much time with him as possible, not just for your sakes, but for his. Tsunade laughed. Kushina continued to cry, all while Minato held close to his son's hand. There's gotta be a way, he said. They took Naruto home and let him rest with them. Despite the danger he posed, they insisted that he sleep with them in bed. No matter what came next, they wanted to face it as a family. All night long, neither could sleep save Naruto, but mostly because Naruto was wiped out from the exertion of his transformation. Minato looked to Kushina. I think I have an idea. She looked over. What is it? Orochimaru. Kushina was surprised by this statement. Orochimaru? How can we get help from him? He's dead. Minato nodded. Right now, I wish he weren't. Surely he could tell us what to do, but I do have the next best thing. At least one of his labs has yet to be checked. We know where it is, but we never went there. Apparently he had taken material from a test subject and was developing it there to create curse marks. Kushina sat up. Do you think that'll work? Minato shrugged. I hope. The next day they had breakfast together and packed up. They informed Naruto that they were going to try something. This was their last ditch attempt and everyone knew it. So they left home and proceeded through the woods for a few days. They could feel the hands of time crawling up their backs, ready to strangle them. They didn't have much time left, but finally they made it to the facility. Minato told them to wait back there as there might be traps. He walked in and began to check the place out. When he was content it was safe, he called them in. They entered the lab and eventually sat down to find the only working computer. They began combing through the files. They looked for anything they could, reading through each file over the course of a few hours. Eventually, they came across a file called File C Mark R. They opened it up and found it spoke of curse marks, how they work. But finally, at the bottom, there was something for removal. They read through the theory on how it could work, but upon reaching the bottom, they were horrified to find that the method was listed as inconclusive, with a note being tacked on mentioning the death of every subject who had had their mark removed by the hypothesized method. In anger, Minato stood and picked up the desktop screen and threw it against the wall, all while Kushina broke down into tears. Naruto just sat there silently. Minato turned around and looked at his son. I'm sorry, Naruto. If I could trade my life for yours, I would. Naruto looked up. Dad, I want to go home. Minato wiped the sweat from his lip. We can't. If you turn into that monster, you'll kill everyone. Naruto grew sad. Kushina looked up. We have a family home just beyond the village proper, still in the village, but away from anyone. If we go there, it should be safe. Minato looked to Naruto. It's good enough. Minato put his hands on Kushina and Naruto and used the flying Raijin Jutsu to teleport them to that home. They appeared right in front of a dagger on the wall. The home was small, consisting of merely one room, but it was homey. That night, they all cuddled in bed for what they feared would be the last time. Kushina prayed for at least one more day with her child. They all rested and the day after they woke up and just enjoyed the time they had left. They sat outside as the sun began to set. Momoshiki sure is taking his sweet time, Naruto said. Kushina looked over. Who? It's the consciousness inside of me. He says he hates being called that and to call him Momoshiki. He says it's almost as bad, but he would rather human lips spit his name unworthily than to not be acknowledged at all. Minato scoffed. Acknowledge him. I would rather kill him. You'll have your chance soon, Naruto said. Kushina tried to lighten the mood. Let's go for a nature walk. And so they began to walk. Kushina pointed out birds and bugs, but as they strolled, Naruto dropped to his knees. Kushina and Minato came to his side. What's wrong? Naruto looked up and with the calmest yet most melancholic tone, simply stated the facts. My chest burns. I think it's time. Naruto pulled out a kunai he had kept with him. It was one of the ones that Minato had given him when he taught him the Flying Raijin. It had a sealing formula similar to Minato's in it, but it also had Naruto's name. He handed it to Minato. Do it. I want to die when I can still be held by you. Minato gripped the blade as his vision grew hazy. Tears dripped down onto it. He looked up at Naruto, who had already opened his jacket and raised his shirt. As quick and as hard as possible, Dad. Minato gripped the blade tightly. I don't think I can. Naruto looked to him. You swore. You're the Hokage. It's your duty. Minato wiped his eyes. I know, but... But nothing. You're the Hokage. This is your job. It's my last request. Kill me by your own hands. Minato held the dagger and looked to his son. How could he? 
He brought Naruto into this world. How could he take him out of it? This was cruel. It was unfair. How could he be expected to kill his own son? Do it, Naruto cried at him, tears running from his face. Kushina put her hand on Minato's. They looked at each other, both gripping the kunai now. They nodded, took a deep breath, and pushed their hands forward as hard and as fast as they could. Naruto's eyes went wide. Minato and Kushina were in utter shock. They looked down at the kunai. It had stopped just an inch short of Naruto's flesh. The hoop at the back of the kunai had been caught on a finger. Naruto's finger. Minato looked up. Naruto? Naruto looked at his father in terror. Dad, I didn't do that. Suddenly, there was a burst of chakra. It knocked Kushina back. Minato, still holding the dagger, dug it into the dirt and looked up. Naruto cried out in pain as the black markings covered his body. He slowly pushed to his feet, a single Byakugan opening. How touching. But it's far too late for that, Lord Forth. Minato rose to his feet as well. He was desperate to reach the seal. He gripped his kunai so tightly that Naruto's name he had etched into it left a visible mark on his hand. He rushed forward with his shadow clones, each clone rushing him too. Momoshiki sighed. So sad. You really think the same thing will work twice? He swiped his hand at the clones and knocked them all down. Minato came out from under him, but Momoshiki slashed him. This one was also revealed to be but a clone, and Minato came down from the trees above. He literally had the drop on him. I just need to activate the seal again. Maybe we can suppress Momoshiki. Suddenly, Momoshiki utilized eight trigrams palm rotation. Minato was knocked back. He looked up. Momoshiki sighed. That was close, but sadly, it was a no-go. He began approaching Minato. Please tell me you intend to die for this brat. I would love to kill you with your own son's hands. It's what you get for being so weak. Minato thought for a moment and it came to him. Yes, I do. I plan to die for my son and I'll take you with me. He began weaving hand signs, invoking the Reaper Death Seal. Momoshiki saw this and already knew what it meant. No, no. He ran forward and put a hand through Minato's stomach. Minato coughed up blood. My turn. Suddenly, the Reaper pushed its hand through Minato and into Momoshiki. It began to pull. Suddenly, it pulled from Naruto the spirit of Momoshiki. Naruto's left eye opened alongside the Byakugan, which was now his. Dad, no! Minato fell to his knees. Naruto held them as slowly his features receded back to what he had been. He shook his head. No, it was me who was supposed to die today, not you! Minato smiled. I know. How <laughs> blessed am I? Kushina came to his side. Minato, what have you done? He looked to his wife. I did it. I saved him from Momoshiki. But at what cost? Naruto asked. Is this really worth it? Minato nodded. For you, I would give everything. I count myself lucky. To die for you, Naruto. He smiled. See, I told you. We'd figure it out. And with that, Minato breathed his last. His soul left his body, claimed by the Reaper. Together, Kushina and Naruto lamented over him. And all the while, Naruto asked himself why. Why couldn't it have been me? Naruto sat on a bench in the park. He just stared into the grass. This was where Minato so often would bring him for lunch. Now, Naruto was eating by himself. There was a bento box on the bench beside him, a meal prepared by his mother, a special gift that she made to celebrate his return to service, but he didn't eat it. He couldn't eat it. He could fill his stomach, but how could he ever fill the gaping hole in his heart? To know that the man he respected and loved so much was now gone forever, whisked away by death itself in an effort to save one as useless as Naruto. Why did he have to die? Naruto wondered that very often. He sometimes wished that he had not waited for Minato and simply fell on his own knife when they realized that there was no way to save Naruto. If he had been there, Minato would still be here. Time was moving forward, and as he looked back to the Hokage Monument, his heart was filled with sorrow. Seeing the ghostly shell of his father's visage looking back at him, Hiruzen had stepped back into the role as the third Hokage, all while trying to find someone to replace him. He had eyes on Tsunade, who was still in the village from her special favor. Naruto sat there by the bench. He looked at the kunai his father had given him. He threw the kunai into a tree and then raised his index and middle fingers for the kunai to return. His father had tried to teach Naruto the flying raijin jutsu, but Naruto could never get it right. He always did it backwards. Instead of teleporting to the kunai, he would end up teleporting the kunai to him. It was still a useful jutsu and meant that he would never lose his kunai, but it didn't make him some yellow flash like his father was. It just meant he was really good at not losing his kunai. He looked at the name he had carved into it, his own name, but on the reverse side was another carving. It said, To my little shinobi with love, Dad. He gripped it and leaned forward, bringing the metal ring to his forehead as tears dripped from his cheeks. Slowly, he heard the crunching of grass. He sat up and looked around. Kushina was coming to him. She sat down on the bench beside him, looking at the grass, the trees, the sky. 
Her eyes would look to Naruto out of the corners. She saw the untouched bento box still wrapped in a napkin. She looked to Naruto. Kakashi called. He said you never showed up for the team meeting. They had to begin the mission without you. Naruto rested his cheek on his knuckle as he looked away. Not a biggie. It's not like we were going to do anything except pick up trash. Makes me feel less like a shinobi and more like a member of a chain gang. But you still need to go. It's your duty to the village, Kushina said. Naruto did not speak, but the moment she mentioned duty, he felt like an elephant had sat down atop his chest. He lost his breath, though he tried to act cool about it. Kushina knew she flubbed when she said that. She looked around. You know, your dad and I used to come to this park every day for lunch. It was one of the few places within the ceiling circle where I could go. We used to train our ceiling techniques right over there. She pointed to an area where things were clear. Naruto sighed. I'm sorry, but is this supposed to make me feel better? This isn't helping, Ma. It's just making it worse. She looked over. Wounds still fresh, huh? She scooted closer, moving the bento box and sitting it on the other side of her. She pressed against Naruto, slowly pulling him into her embrace. I wish I had died instead, Naruto said simply. Kushina shook her head. No, don't say such things. Your father would have never wanted that. I wish instead that it had been me. I was the one who taught him the Reaper Death Seal. Naruto looked at her. And you think dad would have wanted that? Just as sure as he didn't want me to die, he didn't want you to either. She smiles. I know. And you wouldn't have either. This is a sign that we all loved each other, Naruto. Each of us would have been willing to die for the other. Your father just beat us to it. It's only natural. He was the yellow flash. Naruto buried his face into her side. Why did this have to happen? Why couldn't it have just not happened at all? Why were we predetermined to be separated? Kushina pat his head, rubbing the boy's hair to calm him like she had done when he was a child. Sometimes life deals you a hand, and sometimes you don't like the cards. But it's what you're dealt, and you have to play the game. That's called life. It's not fair to anyone, and because it's unfair to everyone, it's the reason that why it's ironically fair. Everyone goes through hard times, and to some, the pain seems trivial, but to others, it seems like a worst-case scenario. She tightens her grip on him. Be grateful, Naruto. You got to know your father and experience his love. There was a chance that in the infinite possibilities, you never got to know him or me. I would hate that world, Naruto said flatly. Kushina nodded. Maybe, but you would still fight and live through it, because I know you. You wouldn't give up. Your father is watching you always. He's not gone from us just because we can't see him. We can feel him in our hearts, and he'll always be with us. Naruto lay there for a moment more. Kushina would take out the bento and open it. Let's have lunch together. Sasuke and Sakura were picking up trash from the streets. Kakashi was standing there, nose deep in Icha Icha. Yeah, it might have been the 15th time he had read this particular novel, but it still maintained that spark for him now. Despite knowing every page like the back of his hand, capable of reciting entire chapters word for word verbatim, he still read it. Sasuke used his grabber tool to pick up the trash and fit it into his trash bag. Sakura's eyes looked up with a little sorrow in them. Naruto and Kushina were coming their way. Kushina approached Kakashi with Naruto by her side. Kakashi closed his book. Kushina pushed Naruto forward. Isn't there something you wish to say to Kakashi, Naruto? Naruto's eyes did not raise to meet Kakashi's. His head remained down, eyes shrouded in shadow from his overhanging hair. I'm sorry I blew off our team's mission. Kakashi put his hand on Naruto's head. It's okay, he said simply. He pulled out an extra trash bag and grabber, handing them to Naruto. Naruto took them and began assisting the others. Kushina approached Kakashi. I'm really sorry about his tardiness. He's just not been himself since Minato. Kakashi raised a hand to stop her. It's okay, Kushina. I understand what he's going through. Minato was the last member from my old team. I know what he's going through. If I could blow off this mission just to sulk, trust me, I would do it too. Kushina smiled a bit. You've always been a good man, Kakashi. Wise beyond your years and understanding. Kakashi blushed a bit from the compliment. Well, I know what he's going through. I lost my father at a young age too. Kushina smiles and offers a slight bow. I must be on my way now. I'll see you around. Sakura looked back at Naruto and approached him. Naruto? He looked at her for a moment. She continued. I'm sorry about your dad. Why should you be sorry? You didn't kill him, Naruto responded. Sakura nodded. I'm just sorry it happened at all. Naruto was in the mood that he had a plethora of things to say to her about this, just utterly rude comments boiling in his head, just enough to tell her how very little her apology meant, but he swallowed all of that, knowing that it was merely the moment talking. He simply uttered thanks as he continued. They continued the work for the rest of the day before Kakashi decided to let them go. On his way home, Naruto stopped by that bench again and just sat there. He knew his mother was making dinner, but he had time. He sat there silently. He felt so close to his father when he came here. It was peaceful and reminded him of all the fun they had, learning to play shogi together, the lunches. There were so many good memories that even the taint of loss could not corrupt them. 
He felt almost as if he could feel his father sitting down beside him. Suddenly, the bench creaked as someone did sit down on it. Naruto's eyes opened as he looked over to see a man with white hair sitting down on the bench. He looked over at the man with such a fire in his eyes that seemed as if the man had just uttered the worst possible insult. The man looked to Naruto. In fact, he had always been looking at him. He was even sitting cockeyed to get a better view of the boy. Naruto was suddenly creeped out by the man. The man sat forward and offered him a popsicle. Naruto stood from the bench and was preparing to run. The man seemed confused. That's no way to treat a godfather, he said as he sat back. Naruto squinted. Uncle Jiraiya? The man nodded as he began to eat one of the popsicles. He offered the other to Naruto who took it. Naruto sat down and began to eat the popsicle slowly. Jiraiya watched as he seemed to work upon his own in a more melancholic way, letting out a sorrowful slurp. I heard about your pa. Naruto kept eating his popsicle as if Jiraiya had said nothing at all. Jiraiya continued, If I had been here, maybe I could have saved him. Naruto shook his head. Unless you knew and were willing to use the Reaper Death Seal, I doubt you could have done much at all. Jiraiya nodded. Perhaps, but I still wish I could have been there. Maybe we could have found another way. Jiraiya sat there for a moment. I'm sorry I'm late, Naruto. I didn't mean to take so long to get here. Business outside the village had called me away. It's okay, uncle. I'm not mad. He leaned forward and put his hand on Naruto's shoulder. I know, but I wanted to be here to support you. The last thing a grieving person needs is to be alone. Naruto nodded again. It's all right. As he said this, Jiraiya detected a shake in his voice. He sat forward to see that Naruto was crying. Jiraiya hugged him. From there, he would go home with Naruto where he would catch up with the family. They'd have dinner and Jiraiya would stay the night. The next day, as Jiraiya prepared to leave, he stopped by the door and looked back. Naruto, why don't you come with me? Naruto was shocked by the request to say the least. What? Why? Jiraiya turned back and smiled. I have so many skills that I taught your father. I could teach them to you and you would be able to grow into a powerful shinobi. Maybe even learn enough to become Hokage one day. Uh, I don't know, Naruto said as he twiddled his thumbs. Jiraiya laughed. Nonsense. It'll be good for you. You'll learn so much and it'll be good to be around a strong male figure. And there's hardly a figure more stronger or maler than me, he said while lifting his arms to pump his muscles. Naruto looked up at him and then to Kashina. She smiled. It's whatever you want to do, baby. Naruto thought about it. I don't think that's such a good idea, Uncle Jiraiya. I don't want to leave my mom alone. She knelt down beside Naruto and put her hand upon his shoulder. It's okay, Naruto. I'll be fine. I lived by myself for a while before I met your father. I can do it again. Naruto seemed hesitant. She caught this and spoke. It's not me that you're worried about, is it? He looked up, some tears forming in his eyes. I don't want to be away from you for so long. I need you, Mom. Kushina's heart melted. She pulled him closer and kissed his cheek. You won't be without me. I'll always be with you no matter where you go. That's how bonds like this work. No matter how far away we are, we'll always have a piece of our loved ones inside of us. So don't be scared. I can explain your absence to the team and to Lord Third. If they know you're training with Jiraiya, they'll understand. Naruto smiled weakly. I love you. She kissed his head. I love you too. Now go get packed. Naruto ran off to his room where he grabbed his backpack. He would begin to fill it with extra changes of clothes and some amenities that he knew he would need, such as a toothbrush and various other hygienic things. He picked up a fox plush that was sitting on his bed. He looked at it and smiled. He fit it also into his bag lovingly and attached his father's gifted kunai to the outside. With enough mementos and things to help him stay clean, he began to return. Kushina saw him and knelt down beside him once more. She wrapped her arms around his shoulders and just looked at him. Watching you go off to train with Uncle Jiraiya, it just reminds me of Minato so much. I can't wait to see you again, Naruto. Go get nice and strong. Make me and your father proud. He smiled and then kissed his mom on the cheek. He walked to Jiraiya, who pumped his fist and laughed. <laughs> yeah, let's get this party on the road. He would begin to march off with Naruto by his side. Kushina would then head out to inform Hiruzen and Kakashi of what Naruto was doing. Naruto and Jiraiya walked for a good while back to Jiraiya's home. It was in the woods. They would make it home at about sundown where they would just have enough time to get settled in. He helped Naruto get comfortable. He smiled. I'm glad to see you've adjusted quickly. Most people get homesick the night they leave. Naruto pulled out the fox plush and the kunai and sat them both near his bed and looked at them. I have my home inside me, he said as he looked at the two items. I have my mom and my dad in my heart. And so long as I have that, any place can be home, no matter how far away. Jiraiya nodded. That's a good way to think about it. Anyway, I'm glad you decided to come. We can begin training in the morning if you like. Naruto nodded. He desired to learn what his father knew. He was excited to train with Jiraiya, which would make sleeping a bit of a chore for him. 
especially considering how excited he was. But eventually, he did drift off to sleep. The day after, he woke up bright and early to the smell of eggs and bacon sizzling in a pan. He would sit down at his seat and found his plate filled with eggs, bacon, potatoes, and toast. He was blown away with how delicious the food was. He had never pegged his uncle as much of a cook, but this was fantastic. You learn to do a lot when you're on your own, Jiraiya said as he ate and sipped his coffee, all while reading the news. Naruto ate as much as he could, knowing his body would need the fuel for the day's work. After this, he would meet Jiraiya outside where they would begin to discuss the way his training would go. Jiraiya spoke. So, one technique I can teach you I actually partially learned from your father. Oh, uh, well, we co-developed it, but he achieved it before I did and showed me how to tweak it so it would work. It's called the Rasengan. After that is a technique I taught him, Sage Mode. Naruto listened and was excited to learn. He knew that he could become very powerful with these techniques. All the while, Jiraiya was scratching his cheek, trying to find a way to approach his next recommendation. Do you, uh, do you still have that mark in the middle of your chest? Naruto's smile faded. The Karma Seal? Jiraiya nodded while looking at him out of the corner of his eye. Naruto nodded. It's still there. Jiraiya thought about it. Do you want to learn how to... No, Naruto said flatly. Jiraiya stopped as silence ensued. He kept his eye on Naruto, who had seemingly grown quite uncomfortable. His sitting position had shrunken. His arms and legs were pulled in, and his expression showed quite a bit of seriousness. Jiraiya thought about it. Well, let's learn Rasengan first. We've got all the time in the world to learn Sage Mode. Not only will the Rasengan make things easier, but it'll also give you a good weapon to defend yourself with should the need arise. And so, Naruto began to learn the Rasengan from Jiraiya, following each step. It seemed Jiraiya had it down to a science. This didn't mean the technique was easy to learn by any means, but what it did mean was that he could slowly achieve each step, one step at a time. For a week, he trained this to the point that he actually managed to form a Rasengan on his own. But the issue with this was that he was still having a hard time forming the shell. He required a Shadow Clone to help him form it, which, while a success, was by no means mastery. Jiraiya told him to keep practicing until he could successfully manage it without a clone. For now though, he thought it best to move on, and so they moved on to Sage Mode. Now this one he stressed caution with, as it was far more dangerous, especially considering that he had no tools with him that could keep Naruto from turning into a statue should he fail. He sat with Naruto and told him to focus. Be like a tree, Naruto. A tree neither worries nor frets. It remains still. All things come to the tree. It does not seek out sustenance, but it finds it in the nature around it. The sunlight. Feel it on your skin. It is energy. The wind. It brings oxygen, which helps fuel your body. The rain falls, it cleanses your body and hydrates it. Feel the life around you. Naruto did those things. What Jiraiya was doing first was teaching Naruto to sense nature energy. Because of how dangerous it was to learn this outside of Mount Myoboku, he wanted to make sure that Naruto had ample time to acclimate to each step of the process. So it really did move at a snail's pace, what seemed like months even. The first thing he taught Naruto was to sense the various nature energy around him. Anywhere there was nature, there was life, and if there was life, there was energy to use, to become one with. But he did not teach him how to absorb it immediately, only to feel it. He then proceeded to teach him how to dive deeply into himself, to sense his own chakra, not just to feel it, but to properly measure it. As he taught Naruto this, the boy began to get a grasp on his limitations. Jiraiya spoke. Always take a mental note of how much chakra you have. Over time, the amount may fluctuate. In battle, it'll be lessened as you exert yourself, but as you train, it will grow. Before a sage may know the world around him, he must know himself. And so, Naruto took a mental note of how much chakra he had. Jiraiya would eventually begin to teach him how to absorb nature energy. Breathe. Just breathe, Jiraiya said. Take the nature energy in slowly. Sense both it and your own chakra at the same time. Take all the time you need to fill it up. You'll get a handle on how much or how little to add as you train. You'll become better, balance better, faster. But for now, just focus on absorbing slowly so you can learn what it feels like. Naruto did this slowly, eventually gaining orange pigmentation around his eyes. Jiraiya smiled. You're now utilizing Sage Mode. Practice this every day carefully. Naruto continued to do so until he could enter Sage Mode quickly. Jiraiya smiled as Naruto had shown progression. He would sit down with Naruto during their lunch. Hey, Naruto. The boy would look up at him and smile. What is it, Uncle Jiraiya? Jiraiya would cautiously approach the situation. Do you believe that if a man possesses strength, that it's his responsibility to use it to help others? Naruto nodded. Yeah. Jiraiya smiled to himself. And do you think that even if a man is hurt by the strength, he should use it anyway to save others? Naruto nodded again. 
If a man can change things, he should be willing to make any sacrifice to help others, even if it costs him his life. Jiraiya looked down. This is why I want to teach you how to use your karma seal. Naruto felt his heart sink. Use my karma? Jiraiya nodded. I know you don't like it, but it's a power only you can achieve. You need to learn it. Naruto turned around on the picnic table. He looked like he was about to get up and leave, but he didn't. I don't know if I can, uncle. Jiraiya felt bad about pushing this, but he knew Naruto had the capabilities to use it. You should try. Naruto shook his head and stood. No, it's off limits. I'll never use it as long as I live. Jiraiya looked to him. Would you really let people die because of your refusal to use it? Naruto was silent. He walked off. That night, he lay in bed and looked at his kunai while gazing up at the plush fox. Dad, what do I do? He closed his eyes. As he lay there, he heard someone enter the room. Suddenly, Naruto was in the park again, on the bench, and by his side was Minato. Naruto looked over. Dad. Minato put his arm around Naruto. Tough choice, huh? I know all about that. It's something a Hokage must do every day. Tell me what troubles you, Naruto. Naruto looked up. Jiraiya wants me to train with the Karma Seal. Minato nodded. And? And what? Naruto asked. I can't. Minato laughed just a little. We both know that's not true. It's well within your power. Naruto sighed. I don't want to use it. And why is that? Minato asked. I don't want to use it because you were killed because of it. I don't want to use the power that got you killed. I don't want to use the power of Momoshiki. Minato sighed. It's not Momoshiki's power. Naruto looked up in confusion. Minato tapped the boy's chest with his index finger. It's your power. It's not power that Momoshiki gave you, it's the body he tried to steal. Minato crossed his legs and looked up to the sky. When you were born and I held you in my arms, I saw myself in you. You had my hair and my fire in you, yet you had your mother's nose and her ears. You wailed with a fury that reminded me of her fury. You are every bit our child and Momoshiki tried to take that away from you. But your strength pushed you forward, and because I loved you, I gave back to you what Momoshiki took away. The power of that karma seal is your birthright. You defied fate. You defied the god that put it on you in hopes of possessing you. It is your trophy and my final gift to you. If you don't wish to use it, I won't be upset. I'll never be mad at you. But no, you are always my child because love makes it so. And that power wasn't what killed me. I died to give it to you, so don't feel scared. Don't feel guilty about using it. It's your gift. Use it to save the world that Momoshiki wanted to destroy. The ultimate revenge on him. Naruto smiled solemnly and nodded. I miss you, Dad. Minato hugged Naruto. I miss you too, but remember, I'm always with you. He kissed Naruto's head and immediately Naruto's eyes opened. Jiraiya sat at the table. He decided to let Naruto sleep in late. The boy had completed his training and Jiraiya was considering taking him back to Konoha to be with his mother. It's what he needed most right now. He was reading the paper at the table when he felt a presence in the room. He lowered the paper to see Naruto sitting on his knees before him. His head was bowed slightly in respect. Forgive me for my weakness, Master Jiraiya. Weakness, Jiraiya said as he put the paper down. Naruto looked up. I am ready to learn how to use my karma seal. Jiraiya came out of his seat and knelt next to Naruto. You're not weak, Naruto. You were never weak. You are strong, and this decision is a sign that you're very strong. Stronger than you know. Now come, let's go and see what we can do with it. And so for a while, the two trained to learn how to use it. Through all of their training, two and a half years passed them by, but Naruto finally felt competent with his powers, and the duo decided to return to Konoha. They stepped into the gate and made their way straight to Kushina's home. Jiraiya stood back a ways as Naruto walked to the door. He raised his hand and knocked. He waited for a while until he heard the clunking of a deadbolt being unlocked. The door opened. Kushina looked out and saw Naruto standing there. He smiled. Hi, Ma. Kushina began to tear up. Naruto. She hugged him so tightly. Jiraiya couldn't help but smile. She looked him over. You've grown so much. You're so tall now. Naruto smiled. She led them inside. There they would have dinner and Jiraiya would once again stay the night. The day after, he would set out for home. Things all seemed happy. Naruto got to catch up with his team, to which they all seemed to have grown as well. Naruto also caught up with Kakashi, who was the only one who didn't seem to change. The Hokage Rock had also changed, depicting the face of Tsunade. It truly was a merry time, but as you know, good times don't always last. While Tobi had at one time before been deterred from getting the Ninetales by Momoshiki, he was not yet ready to give up. He hoped to attack Konoha as it was at rest, hoping to take the Ninetales by force. The issue with this was that the Uchiha still lived there. The Uchiha had many a strange ability granted them by the power of their Mangekyo, which meant that things would not be so easy to deal with. 
he decided that the entirety of the Akatsuki would launch their final attack on Konoha. Once they had the Ninetales, the world would no longer have any hope of stopping them. And so, all of the members of the Akatsuki converged on Konoha, led by Pain and Toby himself. They slowly began to devastate the village. Just as planned, the Uchiha would begin to help fight back, but most of the Akatsuki would serve as a buffer to slow them down, keeping them away from Pain. Issue was, both Itachi and Shisui were here, which meant that most of the Akatsuki didn't stand much of a chance. Team 7 engaged Pain as best they could. Naruto realized that this was the moment he trained for. This was what Jiraiya told him he would need his powers for. He let the Karma Seal activate and added Sage Mode to it in hopes of powering up as much as possible. He would face off against Pain. Naruto's power was overwhelming. He stepped through and found himself surrounded on all sides by Pain. His single Byakugan gave him 180 degrees field of vision on his right side. This made his left side a bit of a blind spot, but his Sage Mode's ability to sense Chakra would easily make up for that shortcoming. He would rush forward. The Diva Path would fire Chakra Rods at him, but Naruto's speed was too much. He easily dodged out of the way of the Chakra Rods and put a fist into Pain's stomach before he could even see it, knocking him back through two buildings. From there, the Ashura Path would raise his arm, a Chakra Cannon forming. He would fire a concentrated blast at Naruto. Naruto's hand would raise and catch the blast, absorbing it into his body. The Ashura Path's eyes would widen. Was that the Preda Path? He asked in response to Naruto's ability to absorb Chakra. He rushed forward and with a single motion ripped both of the Ashura Path's arms from his body before kicking him so hard that his head went rolling. He would immediately turn to the others. Who's next? They were confused and astounded by this. The Animal Path attempted her summons while the Naraka Path summoned the King of Hell to resurrect their fallen comrades. Naruto would punch through the summons before reaching the Animal Path herself and evaporating her with a single massive blast of chakra. The attack the Ashura Path had sent at him returned and magnified 100 times. Naruto then saw the Naraka Path and focused on killing it next. He would cup his hands together and smash it in the top of the head with so much force that its spine would shatter to pieces, reducing the Naraka Path to a mere half of its original height. All that was left were the Preta Path and the Human Path. The Preta Path would grip Naruto from behind, attempting to siphon his chakra, all while the Human Path approached to literally rip Naruto's soul from his body. Naruto would turn the Preta Path to stone and break free before catching the hand of the Human Path, snapping it with his own strength. He would then proceed to grip the Human Path by the throat and squeeze hard enough that its neck snapped. He stood there, having easily dispensed of the six paths of pain. He picked up a chakra rod and utilized his sage mode to sense where the chakra was coming from and made it there in a single moment. The leftover aggression remaining from his new form would not bode well for Conan and Nagato. Kushina was still at her home. She had heard that the Akatsuki were there. She was considering going out to take them on herself. After all, with the power of the Ninetales, she had to be one of Konoha's heaviest hitters. But before she could leave, the Anbu showed up and demanded that she stay in her home. Intelligence had stated that their primary target was the Ninetales, but what they didn't know was that the Akatsuki were already inside the house. Toby came walking down the stairs nonchalantly, much to the horror of the Anbu. They got into defensive position. They threw kunai at him, but before they hit, he utilized Kamui to disappear. Suddenly, he was behind them. They had no time to react before he pressed his arms through their bodies with Kamui and suddenly became tangible again. Each one, an arm piercing their chest cavity, fell and perished. Obito turned to Koshina and smiled beneath his mask. It's been a long time, Jinshuriki of the Ninetales. Sadly for you, there's no demon to save you this time. He raised his hand to knock her out, but he felt his hand grabbed by another. He looked back to see Naruto standing there. Are you so sure? Toby pulled his hand back. Naruto stepped forward and went to punch Toby as he had the others, but he felt like his hand phased through his whole body. It seemed that he wasn't going to be able to deal with him through brute force as he had the others. At that time, Toby managed to strike Naruto and push him back. Naruto thought about this and smiled. He has to turn tangible to strike me. That's when I should strike. But how? He thought of an idea. He pulled out his kunai. When he and Toby rushed each other, Naruto threw his kunai at Toby, which he phased through. But right as he turned tangible again, Naruto used his reverse flying Raijin to summon his kunai back, as it still maintained velocity, causing it to fire at Toby again without him realizing it. It struck through Toby's mask and buried itself deep in his forehead. Toby stopped, his arms dropped to his sides, and then he fell forward. Naruto took a deep breath and sighed, returning to base. He sat down. Kushina ran to him and hugged him. Naruto hugged her back. You're safe now, Ma. At this time, Itachi and Shisui were finishing off the rest of the Akatsuki. With nowhere else to go and nobody to save them, the Akatsuki were completely eradicated in this battle, ending their threat for good. 
Eventually, their base of operations would be found and the Ghetto Statue too, to which they would study and eventually release the tailed beasts from within, returning them to their home nations, which would help foster peace with the other nations. Naruto would continue to serve Konoha, eventually making Jonin where he would train his own team before eventually the title of Hokage was passed to him. During this time, Teneri would probably attempt to destroy the Earth, but it's questionable if he could truly compare to Naruto at this point, so more than likely he gets wiped out just as easily. Or that's what I think. What do you think? Were you surprised with how easily Naruto just flat out bodied the Akatsuki? Well, honestly you shouldn't be. The tiering of Naruto just keeps increasing the threat levels. Momoshiki and by extension Boruto have become the strongest characters yet revealed in the manga. So if Naruto ever decided to train himself on how to use the power of his karma and then stack it with Sage Mode, he would wipe the floor with everyone. Forget about Madara and Kageya, Naruto would body Ishiki at full power right now. So once Naruto really learns to master his power, pretty much nothing in the original story arc is much of a threat to him anymore. But what do you think? Leave a message in the comments below and let us know. Until next time, peace. Did you enjoy our video? Well, then be sure to check out these other great videos from the Amagi. And make sure to subscribe and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos.